to the University of Memphis. You're looking at the number one player in the country, a transcendent player for this program. James Wiseman ruled ineligible by the NCAA. There's a lot more to come with this story, but here's what we know. He's playing tonight. The most surreal scene that, that I've ever seen in a college sporting event. The battle of James Wiseman in Memphis against the NCAA. His future hangs in the balance. And for decades, Friday has been the quietest day on the college basketball calendar. Not so much tonight. Our lead NBA analyst, Jalen Rose, joins us for more perspective. He's straddled and been so successful in the college and the pro game. So bottom line, what do you make of this news regarding Wiseman? Another example of how the NCAA continues to disincentivize talented young people from wanting to play collegiate sports. This is why for decades I've called this system a form of indentured servitude. Because once you sign a letter of intent, where else can talented young people not profit off of their name, off of their likeness, when they're so very skilled and gifted at what they do, yet when you join the NCAA, you're also not allowed to work. It doesn't take place anywhere else in society, and that's why this model has been turned upside down for so very long. What advice would you just give Wiseman and his family right now? In anybody's mock draft, he's going to be in the top three. He's shown how he can perform even in the first game this year for Memphis. I would advise him to continue to practice with his team. He wanted to be a collegiate athlete. He wanted to go to Memphis. He wanted to play for Penny and try to fight the process like he's doing right now. If he comes back to him that he's unable to perform, then hire a trainer, continue to work on your game, keep your nose clean, enter the draft, and ultimately be a top flight pick. There's been a ton of people in the sport that were kind of rubbed the wrong way with the way Penny walked in. We're gonna win a national championship, I'm gonna get the nation's largest, best recruiting class coming off an NIT appearance, and now the crown jewel of that class finds himself in this situation. Short term, what does this mean for Anthony Hardaway? Oh, that has a term attached to it. It's called selective enforcement. The late, great Jerry Tarkanian once said, when the NCAA gets upset at Kentucky, they put Cleveland State on probation. If you look deeper into a lot of signings, in particular of top flight athletes, you can see history of family members moving to the city or the state that they play in, being employed by the school, being hired to do basketball camps, getting impermissible benefits. This thing has been happening since the beginning of time, and I don't think it's gonna put a smear on Penny Hardaway in any way, shape, or form. Okay, I know you guys mentioned it during your NBA halftime that this has been a somewhat difficult day to be a prospective number one overall pick when it comes to eligibility. Jalen, thanks very much. Thanks a lot. To the college game, at least for the moment. Way back on November 29th, 1991, Penny Hardaway scored 18 points and had 15 rebounds in his first game as a player for the Tigers. Now, 28 years later, as the Tigers head coach, he saw his prized pupil James Wiseman score 17 and grab nine boards just hours after receiving an emergency temporary restraining order to allow him to keep playing. Earlier on Friday, the NCAA had ruled him ineligible, and the university said that Hardaway had paid for $11,500 in moving expenses for Wiseman while he was in high school, unbeknownst to the youngster. Despite all that, Memphis says he's going to play against the University of Illinois, Chicago, with the NCAA putting out a harsh statement saying he is, quote, likely ineligible, and the University of Memphis is going to be ultimately responsible for anything that happens down the road. The freshman Lester Quinones with the pass to the freshman Wiseman. Penny coached him in high school in Memphis. Wiseman's from the Nashville area, but moved to Memphis to sort of play for East High School, where Hardaway was, and that's where the relationship began. That's Boogie Ellis, the Duke transfer, finding Wiseman inside. And then, just a little bit too much. He's coming off a 28 and 11 game against South Carolina State in the opener. I'm not sure, thumbs up, thumb downs on the new court there at Memphis, but the guy running the floor at the court is something else off the feed from Alex Lomax, who is an actual <laughs> rare returning player <laughs> for Memphis. And then the rim protector was there. We know what he can do on offense, but this is why people think he's the consensus overall top pick in the 2020 NBA draft. Can reach new heights offensively and defensively, stopping the ball there at its highest point. And then even when gingerly he needs to keep the ball in play, he's able to do it there. Just an all-round incredible talent. 
as Illinois Chicago found out the hard way. 92-46, Wiseman had five blocks. He was taken out of the game, got the standing ovation with all the controversy happening as you see. He's just a terrific player. Bottom line, after the game, Penny knows you have questions. He doesn't have answers, but at the very end, he said something notable. I know as much as you guys want to ask me about James, uh, I have to be silent on that because it's an ongoing process. Uh, I wish I could talk about it, but um, we just have to stay silent about it until we move forward. So anybody asking me questions, I'll just have to move past and say I can't talk about it right now. Why was the decision made to allow him to play tonight, and will he continue to play while the injunction is in place? I can't, I can't talk about the first part, but he will continue to play. That last answer is notable. By the way, Memphis's next game next Tuesday against Oregon, their first big test. Now, with an investigation brewing, Memphis defying the NCAA and the possible forfeiture of any games the Tigers play with Wiseman now currently on the table, you could understand why Wiseman clearly didn't speak after the game. Though after calling the Armed Forces Classic between Washington and Baylor, R.J. Billis had no problem speaking his mind. The key issue here is that that Memphis played James Wiseman when the NCAA said that he was ineligible. And there's a there's an NCAA bylaw 19.13 that says that if you run into a, a local court and get a restraining order or some sort of court order and rely upon that to play a player that is ineligible and later on that TRO is vacated or otherwise dismissed. The NCAA could declare Memphis ineligible this year for the NCAA tournament if it turns out they played an ineligible player in a game. So this is just a garden variety NCAA eligibility issue having to, you know, a booster and an extra benefit. It, it, it's not some crazy thing the NCAA is doing here. The NCAA acted in this case like they do in every other. We may not like the rule, but that's the rule. So essentially, Bill has nothing to see here with regards to being surprised. This happens all the time. Wiseman is just the second freshman in the last 10 seasons to average 20, 10, and shoot 80% from the floor in his first two D1 games. The other guy, probably heard of him, Zion Williamson.